Okay. So, good evening, everybody present here. On behalf of Uplift Pro, I am taking this opportunity to welcome our guest speakers and welcome everybody, all the students who are pursuing CMA and all the students who are thinking of pursuing CMA in this webinar. Uh, the webinar is on the significance of CMA credential in the context of 2021. 2021 has been a silver lining in the dark days of 2020. I know we all were affected by the pandemic, more or less, might, might be career wise, might be health wise, emotionally, financially, whatever, but we were affected. Uh, hopefully tough times are over and it's time for us to dream again. So this evening we are honored to have two of our profound guest speakers from the Institute of Management Accountants or the IMA. We have Mr. Ahmed Mikhalati. We have just uh, seen him also. Uh, he is the Director of Relations of IMA. And he is the man who takes care of the entire Middle East and the India chapter of IMA and boosts up small and big partners like, you know, everybody like us in this region, in this part of the world, so that we can serve you guys in a better way. And you can be CMA in a, in a more methodical way and a faster way. We also have Mr. Fanil Vadekhan. Uh, he's a person who looks after the India operations and the relationships of uh, IMA India. He has always remained as a strong pillar and the backbone of uplift professionals. So as a whole, we can see that uh, in the last 12, 15 years, this CMA certification, CMA credential has become a highly desired qualifications for the finance professionals of India and the Middle East countries. And that has happened in the last 15 years only. So I would say that uh, this happened because mainly of these this people, like Mr. Ahmed or Mr. Fadil. They have opened new horizons for ambitious uh, finance professionals of this part of the world. So we are, we are very thankful to them to be kind enough to come here and uh, enlighten us, and they will be enlightening us very soon. So uh, a little about uh, IMA and CMA, although I think everybody present here, they have, uh, they know a little bit, bit about IMA. IMA has a history of 100 years. It's more than a century back when it started its journey as uh, NSEA or NACA. OK, that was just after the first World War was over. The cost accountants of uh, the US, they united together in the city of Buffalo, New York, to promote knowledge and professionalism amongst the cost accountants and to foster a wider understanding in the role of the management. So that was the first incarnation of IME. So later on, this NACA only, or this NACA, they have changed their name to IMA. In the last 100 years, they have gone through different ups and downs, but however, they have sustained to remain as a global resource for continuous knowledge update for the management accounting professionals and the finance professionals globally. The CMA credentials was first uh, incorporated by uh, IMA. By that time, uh, NACA has transformed this uh, into IMA. It has changed its name. So in 1972, it has started this hallmark credential of CMA. OK, so it signifies your expertise in the domain of management accounting. Since then, so in 1972, so it's been around 40 years that CMA has been, it has established itself as a global, as a mark of global supremacy in this particular field. Today, uh, IMA has chapters all over the world in almost in every country of the world, and it continues its legacy of professional excellence, which was started a century ago. So now in one word, if you ask me what's a, what CMA is a professional certification, it's a credential in the uh, management accounting field. 
and it signifies that the person possesses expertise uh, like supremacy in the area of financial planning, analysis, control, decision making, support, and ethics. So it's a global, although it's US based, it started in the US, but now it is globally accepted all over the world as a certification which is offered by the IMA, IMA US, and which signifies that the person is an expert in the field of management accounting. Regarding the benefits, you all know, you must be knowing this is like self-explanatory. Uh, if you are a rudderless ship and you are like thinking which way to go, you want to go for this part, that part, this part, CMA is, CMA defines a clear career path for you. So it tells you that you are going to be a management accountant in future. So that is something which gives you a clear destination. It's a stable and growing job field. Maybe in pandemic, out of pandemic, whatever, whatever is the situation, cost accountants or management in a broader uh, aspect, management accountants, they are needed everywhere. Because if it is a pandemic, you need cost cutting. And who will do the cost cutting? It's a CMA who will do the cost cutting. And as a CMA, you have huge potential of professional growth, your financial remunerations, and you are global. So it's not only you are bound within Middle East countries or within India, wherever you go, uh, you can claim, as a, um, claim for a good uh, job prospect being a CMA. And at this, uh, finally, you have entrepreneurial potential as well being a CMA. You can be a coach. You can start your own firm in the countries in US or some other countries where it is recognized. So there are a uh, number of benefits to be a CMA. What are the major uh, areas where a CMA uh, you know, focuses? Number one is business application, business analysis, strategic management uh, we have some gopal gopal could you please would you mind switch like uh, putting yourself on mute hi Philos. please put yourself on mute okay so let's come back to this uh, it focuses on business applications analysis strategic management management accounting and reporting so it's a study of cost management, corporate finance, economics, performance management, internal controls, decision making, decision analysis, financial reporting, strategic planning, organizational, entire thing, entire management accounting. Nowadays, they don't call it a cost management. You, you, you know it. Costing is, is, is a very narrow domain. Nowadays, nowadays it is management accountant or a CMA. Uh, Indians, you might be knowing, even uh, um, the cost accountants of India, ICWA, people who have done the ICWA, who are members of ICWA, they have changed their name to CMA India because everybody wants to touch the wider horizon. Nobody wants to stay limited, right? So CMA US is already uh, is doing the same thing. Now, before I go about Uplift Pro, before I become specific, I would like to uh, invite our guest speakers, uh, Mr. Ahmed Makalati and Mr. Fanil, to uh, enlighten us more on the same thing which I was talking about. Ahmed, should I give you the uh, presenter right? Hello, Ahmed, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Um, okay, okay. Should I go ahead? Yes, can you, can no, you? I'm, I'm sorry, I missed the last couple of minutes to the internet uh, connection. Okay, okay. So can you upload your video? I have already made you a presenter. Yes.
E assignment? Uh, but I can go straight live and talk to I think there is some internet issues, Fennel. Hi, Akram. Akram, could you uh, would you mind to switch off your uh, video and be in mute? I mean, I can see this uh, error symbol. Tanil, can you see that? Fanil, I cannot hear you. I think Ahmed can join. I think he is joining back. Yes, he has joined back. Right, right, right. Ahmed, if network is a challenge, you can go without video. You want me to go without video? Okay. No, no, no. I'm asking Ahmed. Okay. We have Jaspreet, we have Lavanya, we have Kumarasan, Manish, Shadab. Hi, everybody. Kavita. Firoz Ahmed. Dr. Pranjal Kumar. We have Gopal. I think Ahmed is saying hi. Hi, Ahmed. Ahmed, uh, can you share it? Can you share your video? Uh, actually, I'm in office, ma'am. I cannot share that with, uh, video. Hello? I think I'm just asking, can you share your video, which is that? Uh, Ma'am, I guess uh, Ahmed, uh, which we are seeing right now, he is a participant. I think it's not Ahmed Mukherjee, sir. Okay, it's not Ahmed Mukherjee, sir. No, no, no. He, 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 Ahmed, he is a participant. So, uh, you can ask him to keep his mic on mute. Okay, okay. But I cannot find Ahmed Makhalti, sir. There is I am a Middle East. I think that's Fanil, right? That's me. Fanil, could you please contact him? Yeah. Otherwise, you could have you can start. He's in Dubai, so I believe he should be able to get me. Ma'am, what we can do is that meanwhile we can just uh, speak about the uh, uplift. Yeah, of course, uh, we, so, can, we uh, can do that. So yeah, uh, yeah. I'm sure the speakers will be joining soon. So uh, instead of making the participants sure. wait, uh, like if we can speak on uplift. Sure, sure. We can wait for Ahmed. Uh, meanwhile, yes. we can speak about uplift. That's true. Fanil, what do you say? Or you want to start? I'm not, I'm not able to get Ahmed online. So maybe what some I... disconnection is there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Albin Thomas, who has uh, logged in as Ahmed, another Ahmed. I was actually mistaken. So, uh, no, not Albin Thomas, Ahmed only. Ahmed, could you please pass on the uh, host right, the presenter right to me, Uplift Pro?
I am. Can you hear me? I think it's not Ahmed, it's me. Maybe what I can do, I can maybe start. Uh, maybe have okay. Can join. Okay. You want to do fine. that? That sounds good. So, Fanny, I'm making uh, you a presenter. You're able to see my screen now? I'm just making you a presenter. Yes, now we'll be able to see your see your screen. Okay, great, that middle east screen, am I right? Can you share once more? No, I have done it on your personal name. No, no, my my screen of uh, middle east one is screen up now. Not yet. Can you see it, guys? Okay, let me see one second. Please do it once more. And I'm facing the same channel. Yes, now it's fine. We can see that. Okay, great. Full screen, am I right? I hope Ahmed will join later, but anyway, uh, sorry for the entire, uh, you know, IT issues, which is anyway, sometimes it's part of any webinars. So uh, guys, uh, thank you very much for joining and uh, thank you Uplift uh, Learn uh, for organizing this event and I'm sure this is going to be really a more powerful session or to just to give you some updates about you know what is happening in the industry and as uh, as the topic says what is going to happen in the first century. <clears throat> Others who are not talking, can you please go on mute? Excuse me, sir. I'm from student side. Your voice is a bit low, sir. You are not able to hear me now? Now it's perfect, actually. Okay. Thank you very much. So uh, we represent the Institute of Management Accountants, uh, one of the, the professional body as uh, in the beginning. Uh, she actually uh, taken you through the the starting of CMA, how we came out. Now we celebrate as a membership body, we celebrate our 100th year anniversary in that we actually celebrated that in 2019. So we are 100 year and 102 year professional body spread across 150 countries with around 140,000 members. So what we do apart from uh, the professionals, uh, you know, certification we held organizations whether my network is facing any challenges Fanil, we can hear you okay thank you because i got a message okay thank you so apart from the certification we are into continuous education professional development networking research and the highest standard of ethical businesses so what we meant by this, so definitely when you progress in the qualification, one of the things which IMA members, I, I, I will actually talk about CMA as a, a certification. The certification never ends there by writing both for exam. To be relevant in the industry, you need to upgrade or update yourself. And that is where the continuous education is part of IMA body. And again, the another benefits being a member, you get access or you can connect to the members across the world. And we do organize many chapter events and these chapter events allow members and candidates to connect each other. And it's also an opportunity to learn, update and share your knowledge with other members around the region. And we do have a very strong research foundation and we work with many corporates in the research initiatives and come out with uh, some of the reports, how, how the industry is changing, how we need to update ourselves. So all these are part of, uh, you know, the uh, IMA as an organization. Again, uh, as I mentioned to you, IMA is not just about the CMA certification or CSAS certification, we do, uh, you know, good number of webinars which upgrade and update yourself. A wonderful career drive tool which help you to, you know, test your skills for the future where you lack and update yourself. So there are a lot with IMA. Just want to give you a quick update about, you know, 
about what, what we are talking about, you know, IMA as an organization, not just about CMA certification. It actually enhances your overall perspective uh, from the uh, perspective of certification, uh, of different topics like technology, uh, robotics, the finance topics, and leadership topics. This, this, these are part of IMA support system. Now, <clears throat> Now, we, when we talk about the evolution or when we talk about why, uh, uh, you know, the CMAS certification is more valid. So, if you really look at this, like we, we, we accountants were more called as bookkeepers, accountants, auditors. Now, what, when you look at working with an organization, you need to be someone who gives insights and foresights to the organization. And that is what a management accountant do. And we, we now these days we say management accountants are value creators and strategic business partners. Now, just to give you a, a perspective about management accounting and public accounting, uh, why I'm giving you all this right now, that is where we are going to talk about what is happening in 2021 or, you know, what the kind of cha changes and challenges which is happening in the industry. Now, one side we are talking about, uh, you know, public accounting or, you know, in India, we call it more as chartered accounting, which is more focused on audit, tax, assurance, compliance, which is more in USA, it is more a public, that, that domain is called public accounting. And that is what a CPA do in the industry. There is a management accountant. They are more looking forward professionals. They develop implement, manage, and report, uh, and help an organization in creating a right value and work as a strategic business partner. So if you really look at, uh, I mean, we do have a detailed study, study about, you know, how the CFO roles are changing. And now, if you look at previously, CFOs were more looked at uh, from data angle, audit angle, tax angle, uh, providing the right information for the people, reporting standards. So it is all about what happened and showcasing that to the, you know, uh, to the you know stakeholders. Now, now the change of a, a CFO or you know a financial officer, what what he looks at. Uh, in spite of being from an accounting field, he need to do more in, uh, insights and foresights to the management or the CEO or the board to take the right decision. So they are more into value creation. That is what we said. A role of a management accountant is moving from or an accountant uh, towards a management accountant. That is where they create value for the organization. Now, a, a management accountant now or a CFO need to right now work with in, in different areas. They, they need to work in strategy, IT, operation, data analytics. You need to very closely work with data scientists to give more insights and foresights. So that is where and IMA and Deloitte recently done a survey. Unfortunately, these slides uh, is not carrying that. A, a survey with the industry and what we talk in that, there are many jobs what you see right now won't be there in the near future. According to the studies, almost 50 percentage of jobs what you see in the in, in the current uh, finance world would be there in the future. So you need certain skills which help you to up, upgrade or update yourself and give more value for the organization. I'll do one thing. I think I'll try to share that presentation that will help you to give a little more power insights. One second. Uh, Basuri, you can see us now? Yes. Okay. So this is yes, what I mentioned in the, yeah, thank you. So, as I mentioned to you, IMA recently done a survey with some of the organizations and IMA and Deloitte done the joint survey. And according to the study, what they say, 
30, almost 28 percentage of organization finance transformation happening right now. And if you look at in the next three to five years, almost 85 percentage of organizations are going to transform. What it means. So if some of us currently working in the accounting field, and if you thought like the current jobs or bills payable, receivables, accounting works, which you are doing, stay back in the next few years time, that is where you're going to face a challenge. And according to this study says, almost 85% of companies are going to get transformed in the next five years and almost 30% of organizations are going on right now. Now, which are the sectors which is going to get more impacted uh, with the technology and uh, te technology in the, uh, in the next couple of years? Which is financial reporting, general ledger, closing accounts, operational accounting, financial planning and analysis, controls and compliance and treasury. And you can see the, what, what kind of percentage of these jobs are these uh, profiles are getting automated or going to affected by the technology. And actually the, uh, the report always talk about or come, up, come back and say what skill set you are expecting from the future finance and management accountants or CFOs in that favor way if I look at it. They need to come with critical thinking, problem solving skills, strong, strong technological skills, people skills, data analytical skills, understanding the business and industry. So being a CFO, I can't say that I can, I'm only looking at the finance area. Being a CFO, I need to look at the overall perspective of the organization and help or support or report this to our uh, Board of Directors. Again, now, when we talk about this, uh, that is where the role of the management accountant again comes into the picture. So management accountants uh, need to give more foresight and insight. That's one of the reasons behind why IMA incorporated technology and analytics as part of IMA syllabus and our CMA syllabus. Now, the other area which a management accountant need to look at enterprise risk management. Being a part of a uh, member of COSU, we are uh, well versed in the internal control aspects and enterprise management. So these are some of the areas where management accountants work in the industry with uh, the, you know, the decision makers altogether. Now, when you look at this, okay, these all the part of the, uh, the survey which we discussed and I may every five to six years go around the world and talk to the employers and decision makers across the industry. And we update or upgrade our syllabus according to the industry requirement. And as per the study, we call this as job analysis study. And this is what IMA management accounting competency framework. And that is what a CMA or as IMA member with a CMA certification will in you. These skills are strategy planning performance, reporting control, technology and analytics, business acumen and operations, professional ethics and values. And finally, it is centered with leadership skills. And if you look at a few slides back, this is what we discussed about. You need to equip yourself with same, some of these skill sets, and that is what we incorporated as part of the CMA certification. And 80% of CMAs globally feels that their certification enhances their ability to move across business. And that's what a role when you move towards a management you are not restricting yourself only in accounting and finance and as per our uh, the qualified cmas around the world they also say that the same thing you know the cma certification help to move across areas of business they can work in it they can work in operations and even in the senior executive levels you can see around 34 percentage of people who completed CMA work as CEOs, executives, and controllers. 
32 percentage of them directors and managers. And if you really look at their profile, you can see 34 percentage of them are final decision makers in the organization. And 22 percentage of them, they are decision makers or people who help decision makers to take the final decision. And 33 percentage, I would say, with, with three to five years experience, they work as management accountant, cost accountant, pricing specialist, investment analyst, uh, you know, uh, or even cost analyst uh, and risk management specialist. So they work in areas where they prepare the right report based on certain analysis and help organization in, or, you know, help the decision makers to take the decisions. So you can see from the beginning, management accountants play a vital role in analyzing and providing the right decisions. I think uh, Ahmed joined. Ahmed, I hope you back. Do you want to continue? I think I have covered some of your part. <laughs> Sorry, everyone out there, you know, I lost connection and uh, I can connect back even though I'm here talking to you from Dubai. I thought the internet would be good, uh, but uh, my apologies about uh, losing the connection. No, please go ahead, fellow, go ahead with the rest of the presentation and I'm going to, you know, carry on with you guys okay. uh, till the end of the presentation for any questions. Uh, you know, thank be you, more than you. happy to answer any of them. Thank you. I, I expected the same, Ahmed. Once you moved from Lebanon to Dubai, I said, I thought like you have a better network. <laughs> no issues. Okay, so now uh, when it comes to CMA certification, uh, it's got part one and part two, just two exams. Part one is financial planning, performance and analytics. Part two, strategic financial management. And uh, when you go through, the both part, each part consists of six core practice areas of management accounting, which is external financial reporting decision, planning, budgeting, forecasting, performance management, cost management, internal control, technology and analytics. On the other side, when you move to the strategic finance management, which comprise of financial statement analysis, corporate finance, decision analysis, risk management, investment decisions, and professional ethics. And these two exams, consists of 100 multiple choice questions and two essay questions and it's a four hours exam so if if a candidate who joined for the program with the right coaching and mentoring if that person can do a systematic learning i would say a student can complete cma certification within eight months or i would say one year to one and a half years time or like 12 months to 15 months time but a systematic preparation is well, well important. Like if you start thinking about how you prepare our graduation, like a few years back, we at least opened the week prior to the exam. Now, if you look at this one day prior to the exam, am I right? But if you start preparing for the exams in that way, you won't be able to clear the exam. That is where I said systematic preparation is very much important. Now, I'll tell you one more reason for that. When you look at these subjects, you might see all these subjects are uh, you studied as part of your graduation or postgraduation. But what happens, you learn all these topics uh, from knowledge and comprehension, what it is that define it. But when you look at CMA, CMA test your skills up to level C, which means we test your application, analysis, evaluation, and synthesis skills. So that is where your learning pattern need to change. You need to really look at, you know, when you start, like, or, or like you have somebody at home within the like age of four to seven years old, just watch them. When you tell them something, they will ask you at least five questions back. So the same way you have to ask yourself, why I'm learning, where I'm going to apply, what is the concept behind it, How, you know, why these are important. So you, you ask these questions yourself, that is where the learning is very important. That's what I think Bashwadi was mentioning in the beginning, like it, it, it is all about, you know, looking at the certifications in depth.
Now, finally, to be qualified or a certified member, you need to complete two-part exam. You need to be a graduate and uh, with two years of relevant experience. You can write exams while you prepare for graduation, but for finally, to call yourself as a certified management accountant, as mentioned, you need to complete both part exams. You need to be a graduate from any stream. So that sometimes the question comes up, I'm from engineering stream and I'm coming from mathematics background. Is it fine with uh, that degree will be considered? Yes, a any major is fine here. And you need to ensure two years of experience. This experience can be prior while after doing your certification. And, when you and you should always have an active membership while you apply for the CMA certification. Exams happens globally, uh, happens in Jan, Feb, May, June, September, October, within like in 12 months time, you can almost write six months and you can choose your exam days within the six months. Definitely you have to look at the availability, but this is one of the additional benefit because I always get this feedback from uh, many other professionals, Indian qualifications and other qualifications. These exams comes with a preset date and sometimes they declare it and, and again, that can be changed. But here you might even, again, the students who are doing graduation might have a challenge with exams happening for the professional certification at the same time. Here the benefit here, you can pick your exam and definitely you can consider the other exams, your travel, your organization requirement, all that you can look at and you can fix your exam date. You can write both parts together or one part first and second part in the next window. So you have an option to choose your exam window and exam part. I think that's where I would like to give a little information about IMA. I think I'll hand it over to Ahmed uh, to give you a little more further insight. Uh, on uh, the topic. Ahmed, over to you. Hi, Ahmed. Do you have a Ahmed? presentation to show? I think he will be there in the question answer round. Okay. 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 I think I would like to conclude right yes, now. Yes, um, I believe at this stage over here, um, let, let's do like open up the uh, room for uh, questions and uh, because I, I miss uh, most of the presentation. I apologize once again, but uh, I think we're ready to open up, uh, you know, for questions and uh, hear from uh, the audience that we, once again, we thank them for joining us tonight. Thank you, Ahmed. It's our pleasure. So uh, like uh, we have a little bit of uh, thing to show, like, you know, we have some uh, students, passed out students who wants to share the experience and the faculty to speak before you do the question and surround. Is that fine? Yeah, sure, definitely. Okay, thank you. Ma'am, uh, I have a small clarification. Can I? Yeah, who is this? Yes, this is uh, from Evangeline Shweta's ID. Okay, so Sweta, would you mind if to wait for uh, 10 minutes more? No, we just want a small clarification from you. Okay, fine. Please ask me. Yes, we have syllabus from Hawk, uh, we have syllabus from Wiley, and we have syllabus from Gleam. And which okay. would you prefer for us to uh, go through that? Uh, see, Sweta. Look uh, at in the later yeah. side, I think. Uh, uh, I, I think we will keep all these questions in hand. True, true. Coming, that would uh, be really good. Hmm. Yeah, thank you. So, Sweta, just we, wait for some time. Yeah, we'll be having so, we'll be having a separate session for questions? Sure. Yeah. Of course, we'll be having that. Yes, thank you. Okay, just give me a sec. I think we have our uh, one of our students, Ajinkya, present within us. Uh, who wants to share his experience? He is a passed out CMA. Ajinkya, are you here? Uh, yeah, Vash. Yes, Ajinkya. Uh, if you want to say something, uh, you're welcome. Uh, yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ajinkya, and I'm from uh, uh, Nagpur. Uh, I've passed. You out can put on your video also, Ajinkya. 
Are you comfortable yeah. putting it on? Yes. Thank you. I'm actually not dressed up properly, so it's better. I keep okay, okay, fine, fine. No issue. No issue. Yeah, so I've cleared my part uh, one a uh, couple of months back and uh, my full coaching was uh, done from Uplift. Yeah. Uh, it was extremely nice experience uh, joining the Uplift. Uh, they, uh, the, the, the notes which were provided were extremely helpful. The coaching uh, was extremely, uh, extremely explanatory. Uh, the coordinators are extremely helpful. The, the, the tutors are... Uh, uh, extremely uh, intelligent as well and they are they are uh, they are cmas so they know how the industry works they are also have the industry experience so in all it was an extremely good experience for me and hoping to clear the part too soon uh, maybe in um, feb uh, i should be able to clear the part two and get the cma title all the best wishes ajinkya yeah thank you thank you ajinkya you have anything else to say uh, no, just to add on. Uh, For I mean, people who are pursuing CMA, some motivation. Yeah, I mean, many of the students uh, have this concern regarding the the facility at the center, which are which have been provided by the IMA. I mean, they have they are taking uh, all the precautionary measures to make sure that uh, the that the tables sanitized, the the systems are kept clean, and uh, every precaution is being taken so that there is not there is no spread of this coronavirus. So you can uh, feel free, you can be relaxed and uh, go to the exam center and give the exams. So just stay motivated, stay determined, and you should be able to clear the exam. Thank you. Thank you, Ajinka. Uh, actually, you know, most of our students are passed out students. They are, we have invited them, but they're totally, you know, engrossed in their office work till now. So you're trying to call them. <laughs> uh they could not make it so that's also, the thing if you want office work and actually i'm simultaneously doing my office work i, I know work. you also you know you also you know uh, doing the night shift, right? <laughs> that's true there's bill the jan feb march that's the time for you guys yeah right right <laughs> so no issue so kalyani uh are you going to tell uh tell us something about uh, a little bit about the offers we provide uh the for the cma course at uplift professionals Sure, ma'am. Uh, good evening, all of you once again. Uh, and I'll quickly brief you about Uplift Pro uh, and exactly what Uplift Pro is providing to all its CMA US aspirants. So coming to Uplift Pro, Uplift Pro Professional is actually created by a group of uh, seasoned entrepreneurs. And basically our motive is to pro, uh, like cater study support to all the aspirants who want to go for the professional international certification. Now, uh, we are also happy to inform all of you that Uplift Pro is also now one of the partners, authorized partner rather, of one of the most world famous publisher, Glam Accounting, through Concord Academy. So uh, in Uplift Pro, we basically provide all the support starting from your CME US preparations, coming to your administrative part. So the classes which we are providing, it's, uh, con it's conducted from every Monday to Saturday at late evening hours, keeping it mind for all the working professionals because we do understand as a working professionals, there are loads of commitments which you people need to take care of it. So it's personal commitments as well as your professional commitments. So late evenings, we are providing our classes and all these classes are being mentored, guided by veteran faculty members. And our faculty members are really uh, student friendly. So whenever you guys have an issue with or you need any support from them, they're always ready. There are they, they are there to help you. So you can get them, you can contact them over WhatsApp, email, whatever mode of communication is convenient for all you. Apart from this, we also make sure that every class recording, every class, the live class which we are providing, all these classes are being recorded from our end. And we also provide you the recordings the very next morning. So as students, you can keep these recordings at your end and refer to it for your preparation purpose. Coming to uh, the uplift package, we have kept our package are uh, very like friendly uh, considering the pandemic which we all went through last year. Uh, 
so it's a very friendly read i'll uh, like i'll advise all of you you can for the admission part you can get in touch with your respective counselors and another most important advantage that you get as an uplift student you get to enjoy all the exam special exam discounts which are being provided by ime us so before you appear for your examination the complete admin admin guidance including your uh, exam procedure how you need to make your payment uh, how you need to book your exam seat at the prometric center all these guidance are provided by uplift team thank you kalani could I, could you please go to the next yeah, i'll just yeah i'll just uh, share uh, okay these are the course content i believe uh, fenel sir already spoke on this so if any candidate requires this we can share it with them over email right we uh, i hope my screen is being visible it's visible but That's it's fine small. okay yeah. so uh, I'm happy to share a couple of uh, testimonials. Enter full screen, please. Can Enter you full screen. screen. Yeah, click F5 where uh, it'll uh, go to full okay. screen. Is it better now? Not yet. Just click function number five, F5. It will yes, go. Yes, I'm trying. I'm I'm doing that. I'm doing that. Is it visible? Not yet. Okay, let's just uh, keep it here. So, uh, as I said, uh, like I'm happy to share a couple, like you know, our uh, testimonials. Ashin, of, if you uh, want these testimonials, we can mail you individually. Okay, okay, ma'am. Okay. Yes, Thank we'll you. do that. We'll do that. Okay. So, uh, these are some of our, uh, like, you know, um, have we had like some of our successful CMA students who have shared their views. Uh, on the CMA preparation. Rahul has is already passed. Rikant is passed. He is a CFO of a company, but yes. unfortunately they are not present today because of workload. Even uh, Anand, Anand has true. passed. Anand yes. has passed. So all these testimonials are available with us, and we will be sharing with you over email. And if you need any further guidance related to active classes or the admission process. Please get in touch with your respective counselors. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, shall I share the screen with you? Yeah, that's good. good. I think it is uh, one of the challenges with uh, WebEx. You know, it actually. Yes, WebEx is having data. a lot of technical. Lots mm -hmm. of issues, rather. True. And maybe many, many so, uh, Sanjay, are, are you here? Yes, Master. Yes, Professor Sanjay Ramchad is here with us. So uh, he'll be just letting you know how we, you know, uh, what's the mode of teaching we adopt here in Uplift Pro for CMA. Thank you, Baswati, and uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, my name is Sanjay, and I'm a faculty with Uplift. Uh, Kalyani spoke about, you know, other classes being conducted and you getting recordings for the for the classes of next morning. What I would like to stress on here is that recordings are not a substitute for live classes. Live classes are important because you get an opportunity to interact with the faculty and learn from them. You get tips, you get, you know, how to crack the exam. They tell you the, what is important, which you miss out if you're only dependent on recordings. Uh, how so? Uh, she also talked about you know how do we teach? Well, we follow a hands-on approach in teaching. So what we do is we explain the concepts to you first. We talk about the topic. We explain the concepts. We give you a grounding on the concepts, and then move on to solving problems in the class. So on your screens you can see a sample problem. These are problems which are solved in the class. So how would we solve this? What is the logic we are applying to solve this question? What is the concept we are applying? So uh, Mr. Fennell also spoke about, you know, understanding the concepts and applying them. That's what we help you with. So you might have studied the concepts in your graduation or in your post-graduation, but how do you apply that 
in real life how do you actually bring it to practice that is what we stress on so if your grounding and if your concepts are strong we teach you how to apply them in your real life situations so i also have students who come up with you know uh, real scenarios which they encounter in their work which are discussed and we help them you know as to how they can apply their learnings to those scenarios so what we do is we solve these problems and then we guide you in solving the question bank problems of whatever learning material you use along with the full support when i say full support we are here to help you crack the exam so if you have doubts if you have questions we are available to help you solve them if you are stuck with some of the questions which you are not able to get through i'm sure my students will vouch that i've always stood for them and i've been available whenever they needed me so that i'm able to help them with their doubts and they're able to go ahead and study and crack the exam so what to see on the question i'm not i'm um, not sure how many of you all are currently enrolled in the cma course but i've provided the answer that can anyone tell me how the answer was arrived at is there anybody who's able to using that uh, npv method it, it's a problem of capital budgeting uh, yes but how did you get the answer? you got 24000 as the answer so you i've given you the answer but what's the concept you have applied npv is right but what part of npv that a uh, uh, net per profit value is uh, positive that means uh, you have to go uh, go for, go for the, the new project one. yes but that's for the project here they are asking only for a particular year year yes okay. the existing machine is still current the current current experts well let me tell you it uses you know depreciation and the tax saving on your depreciation which you would otherwise you know forgo and you would use that to apply it and arrive at your answer so depreciation you as you all know is an expense right so it reduces your profit now because it reduces your profit you also save tax on that that is what is used over here to calculate and arrive at it so if you look at it the question says if uh if the new machine is purchased the incremental cash flow for the first year would be what okay so they have given you some amount of reduction okay which obviously will cost you a uh, tax because it's uh, increasing your profits and you also have depreciation which is reducing your profits and giving you a tax saving combining these two is what you will arrive at your answer so like i told you you will understand the concept first how you are going to then apply that concept in real life scenarios and trust me these are cases or these are situations which you will come across in your work where you are replacing an existing machine with a new machine and how do you benefit by putting in the new machine what is the saving you are going to get what is the cash flow you are going to get so you are going to make all these calculations as a management accountant so you will teach you the concept first and then apply the concept in solving the problems which you then carry with you to apply in your real life experiences also uh, it's here i am not using anything but when we take the classes we use a whiteboard where we clearly write and show you how things are arrived at how you get the answer how the calculations are made it is not verbal it is visual and written you have you know an opportunity to see the calculations and understand how the calculations are arrived at so that it stays with you what i'm telling you now will not stay with you because it's oral but when we teach there's a whiteboard we explain it in writing it's visual you're seeing it it's recorded it is available for your future reference as well uh that's it from me baswati and thank you for you know being patient and listening to me i pass it back to baswati for you to continue thank you thank you so much thank you so much sanjay sir uh we have one more problem is there anybody who wants to solve this or we'll just uh, pass it do you have ganpati sir with us 
Dr. Pranjal, you are saying something. You can use your mic. No, I was just saying that uh, being uh, being in supply chain management will it be helpful for me. Uh, I think we have our IMA speakers. They will be answering you okay. in a more correct way. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this is more or less, this is the kind of uh, questions we'll be solving in the class itself. And uh, now I think let's go to the question and surround. So Ahmed, are you there? I am. Yes, Ahmed, should yes, I give I you the presenter right? Do, I, do you want to present something or we'll just simply go to the question answer right uh, round? We'll just go straight to the questions if you don't mind. Okay, so guys, uh, you can unmute yourself. And if you have any question regarding CMA, the job prospect, the course content, uh, or whatever, the admin procedures, uh, the teaching way, because the faculties are also there, please feel free to ask us. Uh, hello. Somebody was asking about supply chain. Yes, Ashin. Yes. Okay. I wanted to ask that uh, I am per, I am pursuing a CMA. Uh, actually, it's Indian CMA, so I, the which we commonly know by the name ICW AI. Okay. So I I was I, I wanted to know if there are any exemptions once I complete uh, this uh, uh, CMA. It will I get any exemptions in IMA? That's a really good question. Thank you very much for asking that. Uh, um, I'm, I'm just going to go a bit back into the CMA exam. Uh, the CMA exam was actually two parts exam. We, we initially started the CMA with four parts exam. And if uh, a candidate pass all four parts of the CMA exam, they will become a CMA. And if they go on with a five part exam, the fifth part exam under the title CFM, Certified Financial Manager, they will become CMA, CFM. Until the year of 2012, we have decided instead of having five papers, we have decided to uh, reduce the number of papers. Um, I haven't thought about some of those topics that are already covered at a university level or they are covered through other professional certifications. So we reduce the number of papers to two parts exam instead of five. So um, uh, look at all the professional certifications worldwide um, they're not exempt from the two parts a, a CMA exam. They have all CMAs, they have to sit for both parts exam. Um, within the IMA, um, we, we, we don't really believe in grandfathering or a given exception since it's only two parts exam. And we strongly believe that uh, uh, each CMA, they have to earn the certification by actually sitting for both parts exam. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for asking this okay. question. Okay. Very okay. Good right. question. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, so uh, your coaching uh, would be based on what material? Would it be on Wiley, Becker, Glam? See, Ravi, as we are an unauthorized partner of Glam, uh, recently we have uh, like uh, tied up with Glam, so you will be getting Glam materials. Okay, so which one do you uh, suggest no, for the no, students? No. I mean, I think uh, there regarding was as previous. far as materials are. Uh, Yes, Ravi. Yeah, tell me. Go ahead. There was a question also previously asked by a gentleman. So, which uh, material should the student go? Okay. Uh, Fennel. 
I can answer that See, questions. I think. I'll, uh, oh, oh, go ahead, Fania. Okay. I, I wasn't no, sure if you. Are I mean, I, I already presented. Now you have an option to uh, take the questions. Yeah. Please go ahead. I mean, if you, if you're looking at a, at a material, which one is better than the other? I mean, I'm, I, I would rather rephrase that: is which material works the best for you? Okay. And now, um, it's not only about the materials; it's the combination of the instructor quality and the material that goes hand in hand of, with 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 the provider that is proctoring those lectures. Um, what is really important is if you follow one study material, not to be mixed up with any other material. Now, with uplift professionals, they, they adopt the Glime. Glime is an excellent material. They're known in the market. They have developed the materials up to the standards. They use updated uh, the CMA content specification outline. And they follow exactly our curriculum. Uh, but the thing is, what, what you need to consider is like how much, how many hours you're willing to put into the program, because it's not only about the material or the quality of the instructors. Um, a CMA, what it takes to pass the CMA, is certainly has to do also with the study plan, with the commitment with the perseverance and making sure that you have enough time to study for each part exam. On average, to pass uh, the CMA exam, it's required about 150 hours. Uh, it sounds like a lot of hours. However, if you have a study plan and you have set in your mind when you're going to be taking the exam, this is very important. Um, when you're going to be taking the exam set up as a goal, as a deadline, when you're going to be sitting for, for the exam and work yourself backward by, you know, organizing your, your study plan over 150 hours and meet that deadline by sitting for the CMA exam, that, then it's doable. So it's the question of not only the materials or I'm going to be counting totally on the instructor to pass the exam because, no. And it has to do also with the third factor, which is your commitment, your study plan, your perseverance and determination to pass it for the first attempt. Okay, got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, everyone. This is Manish. Just wanted to ask, I've already enrolled CMA US. I'm a working professional. So just wanted to recheck with Basavati, like uh, uh, if somebody uh, study only hot material, will that be okay? Pass these exams. Uh, Manish, uh, I would like to like reiterate what Ahmed said right now. Mm -hmm. So um, all the publishers, to be very uh, frank, all the publishers, they uh, like the publishers who are authorized by IMA, of course, they follow the uh, content specification outline given by uh, IMA. Does they follow the syllabus rightly? So whatever book, whatever uh, study materials you follow, follow it in and out. If you have hot books, perfect. If you have Glabe, very good. If you have uh, Wiley, that's also good. But whatever you follow, follow the study plan, follow the, uh, write the mock questions, uh, follow the MCQs, essay questions, do it properly. Do not question on the you know author, if it is an authorized provider, I repeat. And after that, all again, if you feel that I need to solve some more mock questions, then you can ask our faculties. Uplift Pro also has uh, its own set of mock questions. Our faculties will be helping you. Is that fine? I mean, um, um, if I may add uh, a 20 also, um, I, I highly encourage, uh, you know, um, enrolling with the CMA course provider, going back to, to the note by the gentleman talking about the lectures rather than self-study. With the self-study, it's more, um, it's good, but I mean, we all are human beings and sometimes we don't really, you know, follow... Right. Uh, follow, but with the CMA uh, uh, course provider uplift, they have a structured schedule where you have to attend, and 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 you'll be 
studying as a as a CMA group rather than an individual. What you're going to be hearing from the instructor having that kind of experience, which is very important to note over here, a, a, a CMA instructor that passed the CMA exams is very important to walk you through the exam tips and techniques, how to tackle those multiple choice of questions and essays. And the other thing is, as a CMA study group, I mean, you will hear your, your, your colleagues in the same CMA group questions that you maybe you never thought of the, and, or the other way around. So it becomes like a, like a study group that is, you know, catered by a CMA who has gone through the experience of sitting for the CMA exam and passed both parts of the CMA exam. Um, this is, my, from my experience being in the training industry for the past 20 years, um, I, see, I see there are higher chances for those that they, they enroll with course providers such as uplift professionals rather than doing it on their own. Um, they have better chances of passing the CME exam because the, 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 the environment, I mean, the whole atmosphere when it comes how to prepare for the CMA. And of course, I mean, having additional uh, sessions, uh, you know, open forum for the questions with the appointed instructor, that certainly really helps. Thank you, Ahmed. Uh, is that fine? Manish? Yes, Vaswati. Yeah, okay. thank you, Amatir. Okay. Welcome, Mr. Denish. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Ma'am, Dr. Pranjal was having a question. So, uh, yes, yes, he was him. having a question. What right. is he? Dr. Pranjal, you can please uh, unmute your mic yes. and ask your question. Yeah, uh, Mr. Ahmad, actually, I have uh, like more than 25 years of experience in supply chain and I have an engineering uh, background. Uh, so will it be so will it be helpful for me uh, to like uh, uh, to like improve my career profile in for, for also can it be helpful for me to be like a consultant industry consultant later on? Absolutely. I mean, you, you'll be surprised, Dr. Pranjal that yeah. uh, um, uh, when it comes to the CMA certification, it's not only tailored to accountants and financial professionals. And therefore, when it comes to the eligibility requirement in terms of education, we have opened it up to any bachelor's degree, irrespective of the major, uh, let it be English literature or whatever the case. And most of the, the, the CMAs that they come from non accounting and finance backgrounds, they're actually engineers because they're good with numbers. And they pass the CMA and it helps them with the project because we're not talking about CMAs only within organization. A CMA could be a consultant, a CMA could be an entrepreneur. You know, it's all about numbers, um, you know, business. I mean, consultancy and being a decision maker or support with the decision making. Um, CMA is the certification because um, you would have the analytical skills to look beyond the numbers. So the numbers, analyzing the numbers behind a project or behind a consultancy, uh, you know, proposal, that certainly help because you're looking at it from from an analytical point of view. Where is the company at in uh, in, in the present time? and where the company is going to be five years from, from today or 10 years from today. So it's certainly the CMA certification helps from a consultancy point of view or as an as a independent entrepreneur that have their own business and they want to make sure that the, the company will progress and will grow um, you know, to be successful when CMA certification is the right certification to go to. And having up, you know, added with the supply chain, this is all business. I mean, how to reduce the cost or the shipping and all of that and how you're going to be plugging it in. 
within a budget itself and looking at the bottom line. And as a matter of fact, I mean, the CMA certification would complement your long time experience in supply chain and your engineering background. Yes, sir. The answer is definitely yes, Mr. Pranjal. Yeah, thank you. Thank Dr. you. Pranjal, thank you very I'm sorry. You're welcome. So I have a question. Uh, sorry. Yes, Hello. Please go ahead, please. Yeah, I have a question. Yes. Post qualification, uh, what should I do to make myself visible in the job market? Any any small advice? Uh, yeah. Post qualification. Um, any post qualification? How to make yourself more feasible in the uh, market? So, well, I after pursuing, I mean, after pursuing uh, CMA, well, well, what uh, what uh, what uh, what should I follow? What steps should I follow so that uh, the the job job givers or the companies uh, recognize me. How do I make myself visible that I have a CMA certificate? I mean, um, if, if we were talking about the recruitment portals, I highly yeah. recommend. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I highly recommend to add those three letters CMA and also within the CV itself, you know, um, write the full uh, word certified management accountant because. Recruiters will go on those recruitment portals and they they look uh, into certain criteria by punching in, let's say, CMA or Certified Management Accountant. And by having those three letters or the full uh, three words, Certified Management Accountants, that will give you the opportunity for those CVs to be, you know, visible to the recruiter. Um, um, I, I can tell you from right now, again, from from my experience in the training industry, uh, most of the recruiters or you know um, or the 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 headhunters, what they look for is they look for a combination of academic degree plus plus professional certification plus few years of experience. Now, when they log in into those recruitment portals and they punch in the three letters C and A or the three words certified management accountants. They are seriously looking into those profiles only, or even for a job opening within organization itself. Trust me, I know those guys at the HR. If they don't see three letters, let it be CPA or CIA, depend on the job opening, what they're looking for within their organization itself, they will take only 10 seconds or 15 seconds at looking at each CV, unless if you have the three words or the professional certification, not to be biased with the CMA, but if you have three letters certification, if your focus in auditing, you know, CPA or CIA, if your focus is management accounting, you have CMA, certainly they will look into your CV and they will pay more attention to your CV. So make sure those three letters are there within your CV. And the other thing is for those that they haven't yet got the certification, um, I highly recommend you to say within the CV itself, uh, you know, that I'm preparing for the certified management accountant. That shows ambition. That shows that sooner, or, you know, you're going to be a certified management accountant and you're working on enhancing you, your skill set. So that is really helpful. Um, the other thing is um, I would recommend that every two to four weeks go on the recruitment portals and change one letter or one thing within the CV itself, because some of them, they look into fresh CVs. So your chances would be as a fresh CV higher than those others that uh, they haven't updated the, their CV more, more often. The other thing is that I suggest is the network. Um, within the INA uh, network, we have over 140,000 members. You know, uh, we have our own linked up IMA network is similar to LinkedIn, but we call it linked up IMA, where you can connect with other members within our organization. And you, also you have better chances to land a job, you know, connecting with another IMA member or another CNA certified saying, hey, listen, I, I'm a CNA or I'm preparing for the CNA and I would like, you know, what, what would you advise me in order to connect with the with the HR within the company. 
uh, those that they have inside connect, they have better chances of landing a job within the organization more than just cold calls or more than those uh, recruitment portals. I hope that helped. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It helped me a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I'm you a, so uh, much. I'm a, a final question. Sorry for that. Sure. That okay. Sure. Okay. I have close to 17 years of experience. Uh, close to five years into accounting domain and 13 plus into IT field, right? Now, for after yes. me completing the certification, uh, the exam, right? Wanted to know how yes. will IMA validate my exam? Will they cross check my experience? Do I have to submit any experience letters? How is it? I mean, how does the process overall take? Um, when it comes to the experience, it's a simple application form that is available on our website. Um, we, we, we're not that complicated when it comes to what is required. You just complete that uh, that application and you send it our way for our view. We do require you to notarize it through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs or through a board, local board. We just, uh, you know, we just take what you, you know, what you have, uh, uh, what you have stated within uh, that application as far as like experience, and we, we go from there. I mean, um, we, we we entrust our members. We strongly believe in ethical conduct. That uh, you know, uh, when it comes to fulfilling the eligibility or the experience requirement, what what is written on that application is absolutely. Uh, true and genuine, and uh, that's that's about it. Okay. So you mean to say my experience letter should be authorized by anybody? No, 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 Is no. That... It has not to be. Uh, it doesn't need to be authorized by anybody. You just oh. send us the. You download the 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 form from our website, and you complete it, and you send it back our way. That's it. It doesn't need oh. to be notarized by any other body or or government. Uh, uh, or government, uh, uh, like a foreign ministry or something like that. Um, okay. I'm originally from Beirut, Lebanon. Uh, when it comes to those things, we yeah, always have to go through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to notarize things. And if we're going to another country, we have to notarize it by the, the, by, by the embassy that is locally, you know, working in, in Lebanon. But... Mm -hmm. You don't have to do that right. when it comes to the IMA providing with the experience. Thank you, Ahmed. Okay. Guys, anybody else? Do you want to ask anything? We don't get this opportunity, you know, uh, <laughs> very frequently. So take advantage of this. Ahmed is there, Fanil is there. Whatever uh -huh. question you have, please ask. I, I really hope, uh, Rachwani, that this, uh, for the attendees out there, I mean, this webinar is considered the starting point for a journey of success with the CMA certification being uh, guided by uplift professionals. I mean, the beautiful thing about what uh, Fanil and I do is uh, you know, when we see people getting CMA certified, it, it's really a game changer it, in terms of career growth and um, on a personal level in terms of being compensated financially, you know, it's totally different than without the, the, the a professional certification. So um, with, with better financial package and better career growth, uh, we re I really enjoy talking to those that they become certified and they say, seriously, uh, Ahmed, the, you know, the CNA really changed my life. Uh, I'm working less, I'm making more money, my, my family is happy, and uh, this is like a great reward. Uh, I really love, uh, you know, seeing people after getting certified, that the kind of feedback I get from them. It's outstanding, and, and, and thank you so much for helping CMAs out there. What's uh, one getting certified? It's a it's a it's a, a, a game changer, and uh, I mean not only it's about you know career growth, it's about the confidence 
that it gives the CMA uh, candidates, it gives them the confidence that I know what I'm talking about. I'm confident of what I know. I have the best and the latest techniques that are exercised and they are demanded by by by, by top organization. As you know, like 90% of the organization, they have hard time trying to recruit the right personnel. But having the CMA is like no question. That's right, that's very right. So we also keep on telling the same thing to our prospects. Nitesh, you have some, something to say. So yeah, ma'am. So my question is to Fenil sir or Ahmed sir. Anyone can answer me. So I'm working as in one of the big four as an audit assistant. So I just started uh, like one one and a half year back, and I've registered uh, for CMA. So just your opinion, like I'm actually facing a bit of difficulties managing work and studies simultaneously because working at Big Four and right now currently busy season, like it's way too difficult and I end up like even now I'm still working and having the session over here. So how, what do you suggest and how do you uh, suggest me to go about it? Uh, I want a few points from both the Fenil and Amitza. Yes. Great. Thank you. Uh, good question. I think this is one of the challenges. Uh, uh, a lot of candidates come back to us. Uh, what, what I would like to say uh, before even joining IMA, I was with even working with a post provider background. So we face these kind of concerns or issues from the students. I think the first thing which I would say if there is a Will, there is a way. Okay. So I understand there is a high workload which is there with you. Uh, whereas if you can spend maybe an hour or an hour and a half every day, and on your weekends, if you can spend another three to five hours, I think you will be able to manage it. I think that's what I would like to give as a genuine feedback. And I think that's what I've seen uh, how working professionals manage their work as well as studies. Uh, I think Thank you, Fenil. Thank you, Fenil. Baswati, yes. Sanjay here. Can I just add something sure. to what Fenil said? Sure, 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 of course. Um, Nitesh, just to answer your question, I know it is challenging to, you know, balance work as well as studies and things like that. Uh, can okay. give you a, I can give you an example. Okay. okay. I had a student who had a similar issue of not being able to devote time. What he did mm -hmm. is he prepared, a, he prepared a study schedule, but he could not adhere to it because of the work commitments. So he okay. changed his strategy, adopted a strategy where every time he would have a break. So let's say he's traveling from one office to another office and it's going to take him 20 minutes. In those 20 minutes, he would probably solve two or three questions or go through one of the concepts. So he would okay. utilize these small breaks between his work to up, mm. you know, upgrade his knowledge, okay, or for the okay. or you know, go through the course material so that he's able to prepare in small pieces. And when he used to get a larger chunk of time, he would then you know devote that larger chunk of time to study. So it is not okay. that you know you cannot manage your work and uh, complete this course. It is doable, provided you know you find out what works best for you. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Sanjay. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. I got a question here. This is Rajneesh. Hi, Rajneesh. Hi. My question is uh, to Mr. Ahmed. My question is, what are we doing uh, as as an IMA uh, to uh, to keep CMA um, as elite as it as possible? Basically, to give it a, a competitive edge against CPA or any other designation in US. Ahmed, are you there? Uh, can I have one question from my side? Yeah, sure, Harish, but... Uh... 
mentioning like we uh, you know appreciate all the qualifications around the world and it's qualification created with a certain intention so if you want to be an accountant or in a big portion of an organization definitely the qualification with like cpa makes a lot of sense but at the same time uh, cma is another uh, side it's an all together in focus towards performance management accounting and core finance area so uh, CMA is one of the preferred qualifications across the globe, even in US. And uh, the relevance of management accounting increasing day by day, especially when we are moving towards the finance transformation and your uh, all these uh, technological changes actually uh, taking away most of the jobs which can be automated is going to be automated. So that is where management accountants play a vital role in creating more relevant value uh, for the organization to make the right decisions. Ahmed, you would like to add a few things? I'm um, sorry if I know everyone out there. Um, I lost connection for a while, so I just got up to the last the couple of things. What IMA saying. is doing to yeah, the question was what IMA is doing in the market to differentiate and uh, keep IMA on the top of the priority. Uh, like, uh, so the question was how, how about that with CPA kind of qualification? Particularly brand value. Yeah. yeah, brand value. You can add what I think you can add to it. Well, I mean, um, to set up with um, the IMA head office is. Uh, the IMA head office is in the US, New York, New Jersey, and what we do have across the globe, we have different hubs. Um, we have, of course, the Middle East hub. Uh, we have another hub for Southeast Asia in, in Singapore. We have another hub in Europe, Amsterdam. And in China, we have uh, few offices in China, and of course, we have uh, our hub in India. And um, so we're, we're expanding our network because once again, we have members from all over, um, 140,000 members from over 150 countries. So as far as like a brand, um, brand name, we're working our best to enhance that because uh, I'll be very frank with you that most out there, they know us as a CMA, but uh, they're not that familiar with the IMA itself. So we're trying to change that mindset that the IMA is the association that is actually behind the certification, the CMA. I travel a lot. Um, through both, uh, you know, all, all over between the U.S. and and the Middle East, and I I paid India a few visits, and when it comes to talk about the CMA, um, uh, accountants, um, financial professionals are aware with it for of the CMA, but when I start talking about the IMA, kind of like okay, who's the IMA? What's happening with the IMA? They, they cannot, most of them, they don't find the relation between the IMA and the CMA, and we're trying to change that. And, and we do a lot of events uh, in, in terms of creating awareness of, about the IMA brand. So we have a global events. Um, unfortunately, we didn't do a lot of. Uh, events this past year because the pandemic, but on a yearly basis, we have our global event that takes place in the U.S. It's attended by over 1,000 from all over the world. We have our regional events. 
uh, for for India as well as the Middle East and as well as China, Europe, and Singapore. And uh, we do a lot of research uh, in partnership with other associations. Um, as an IMA, we, uh, and I mentioned once before that we have our own uh, monthly magazine by the name of Strategic Finance. So we, we keep building the brand name as an IMA, and we, 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 we are focused on the, the CMA certification. We, we have a, a very diversified product portfolio when it comes to certifications. I mean, our, our focus on management accountants, and we, we consider uh, ourselves, uh, um, you know, ambassadors when it comes to the CMA by, by focusing on CMA, keeping CMA first ahead of anything else. Thank you. Thank you, Ahmed. So, welcome. are we done with the uh, questions? Anybody else wants to ask anything? Should we wrap up? Yeah, it's already 9.30. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay, so um, it's a pleasure to get you among us, uh, Mr. Ahmed Makalati and Mr. Fadil Balakin. Thank you so much for enlightening us with all these new updates and information. So um, it's a pleasure. And I would like to thank you, uh, both of you, on behalf of everybody who has participated here, in spite of your busy, very busy schedule. Which I was mentioning, Jan, Feb, March is the is a crazy time for you guys. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, should we call it a day? Thank you. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank for you joining. all. Thank and you thank all. You all yeah. students thank you. Thank you, everyone. You guys take care. Be safe. You too. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, thank you. you. Good, thank night. you bye -bye. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. bye, -bye. We have one more Uplift Pro who has logged in as a host. Could you please end the meeting?